Hello people and welcome back to another episode of Clubhouse with me Ben and me Josh. In today's episode we'll be talking about feeling a sense of accomplishment with things you've achieved in life and if you never have and don't then why, uh, which I think we've both been guilty of before. We also talk about gratitude and why it's important and how it's something that we could both be better at. If you like this episode please like and subscribe, we're releasing a brand new episode every single week. So with that being said, stay tuned and let's go. Same, same. And not happy, not elated, not same. So when I ran the AEK, which was the longest I've ever run yet, and I'd done it in sub eight hours, which is crazy quick. Like it's a, such an achievement. And at the end, for like ten minutes, I was like pumped. I was like a little bit emotional. I was like, "Fuck, well done." And then I was like, I was almost depressed that yeah. it was over. Like that's I, a shame, isn't it? It is a shame. How do you hold but on to I also think it's a huge motivator because you're never satisfied. So that's why I think like people like you and me will always go on to the next thing. Because like if you if you did feel a sense of accomplishment and you just felt great and you always felt great about what you did, what's the motivation to do it again? Because you're so happy with what you've already done. Yeah, you know I, mean? I do know what you mean. Like a sense of accomplishment, if like the result is that you feel it well, then you can sort of lean towards comfortability and that yeah, might like, not always be good to, for you. If it's such a good feeling and if you always feel a sense of accomplishment, what's the motivator to push on and do something else? Don't think it's healthy, but no, I think No, yeah, it's but then when comes a time when... Never. You get your well done. Never. Never. But like, it's about enjoying the process, not the outcome. That's what I've tried to changed my mindset because when I realized I was that type of person I was like you're never going to be satisfied and learning to be satisfied is very difficult but I was like I can learn to enjoy the process like my favorite part about the races is the 12 weeks of training yeah like getting after it 12 weeks trying to eat well trying to sleep you know what I mean like that's the bit I love or learning something new I love the process of being a beginner whereas once I've learned it it's like and it probably comes from the fact as well that that is such a much larger portion of your life in comparison to, let's say, running, for example, is what yours yeah. is. Yeah, the race is what? Hours? Eight hours versus 12 weeks. Exactly. That's probably why it's not as memorable. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a weird one. And obviously with your one, like exercise and that, training's cathartic, right? Yeah. Can be, but um, if if, yeah. if you if you ignore the intensity aspect of mm. it, like there's a there's a a sense of like relaxation and like meditation in, to a degree with running. For me as well, it's a sense of purpose. Like I have something that I'm working towards. Not that my purpose is to run, but I've got a goal, which is the race. So for that twelve weeks, I have like a north star. Like I know what I need. I have something to keep me on track. Whereas if I don't have anything I'm working towards, like I'm the most unhappy when I've got loads of time. Yeah. So like if I have things that I'm working towards or like a goal, I don't know, it's just I'm, I'm cl- much more clear. <laughs> like I don't doubt what I'm doing. I know I'm out running an hour and a half every day. Yeah. I'm not running. I'm thinking about it. So I'm eating well. I'm sleeping well. So. It's like they say, you know, idle hands is like the devil. Yeah, yeah. The and devil makes work <laughs> of idle hands. Yeah. Which is true to a degree. I feel, I, feel, I think me and you are like on the same page of that. I feel when I've got nothing to do and it doesn't even have to be, I've not been doing anything for three weeks now I'm bored. It could be a couple hours yeah, mate. a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got nothing to do, yeah. I feel lost. Yeah, yeah. Which sometimes winds me up because... I'm like at home and that, you know, somewhere where you should feel comfortable. Downtime. Somewhere, somewhere where you should feel content. Yeah. And instead of taking a pause to say, oh, like, you know what I mean? You just learned a full song on guitar or you spent the day working and you've been to the gym twice. Yeah. Sit down, man. Yeah. I, the thing I just is don't that, do it. And like, I think for me, I'm exactly the same. And I think it's one of them, 
I think you just almost, what's harder, accepting who you are and just leaning into that. So knowing that downtime doesn't make you happy, so just don't try and force yourself to do downtime, which is what I do. Like, I don't try and force myself to do downtime. Like, it just doesn't work for me. I'm not happy doing it, so I try not to do it. Or versus trying to force yourself to do something you're not naturally inclined to do. Yeah. And then who cares if you, like, you should have downtime. Yeah, but if you're not naturally wired that way, it's not like you're depriving yourself of something that you really want because you don't want to be doing it, you know? That makes sense. But, and we've spoke about this, it always comes up balance. You run the risk of burning yourself at, you know, both ends. If you're constantly on go, man. Yeah, but what does constantly on go mean? Like, if you were sat at home (laughs) reading a Stephen King book, versus or researching a new scale on the computer yeah. versus sat there watching telly. You're not like physically exerting yourself. You're not like, what's the difference? Yeah, that, that is correct. But that just depends what type of downtime you, you yeah. mean, isn't it? Like, yeah, downtime for me is like, like, well, what I would consider downtime is a non- not a non-engaging activity, but you know, like almost like a, like one of those mind numbing, like you just, yeah, like I don't, I don't know, TV, movie, like, yeah, I know what you're saying. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. That's what I would say is like downtime. Well, if we ignore the fact we said downtime, but sometimes you just have to try and find peace. Right. Yeah. And I think that's what we struggle to do. To an extent. Like for me, yeah, I spent four hours doing that video yesterday. Yeah. And it was the most peaceful four hours. Like I was just, you no, know, State of flow when you're just not in anything else and you're just completely flowing. Yeah, Nirvana, man. Yeah, that's the, for me, that is downtime. That's like, if I, I don't get to that state unless I'm in something. Like, I can sit down and get into that state where I'm just completely in what I'm doing. Even we were saying it the other day about um, the last time we were in a movie and just like completely obsessed. Just with immersed with and what you're watching yeah, and your yeah. thoughts and nowhere or doing, else. doing like movie or actually having a chat like this or yeah know. and we get that out of our hobbies isn't it so that that's where we yeah. sort of find our like relaxation even though it, it doesn't look like relaxation to because some people you're not chilling out yeah but it's it's internally like peaceful yeah, yeah. Because- like again for me it is anyway a stressful situation for me would be trying to force myself to have sit and watch a movie or sit with Megan and watch like a four episodes of The Crown. Like I would find that stressful, not stressful, but like in terms of like that compared to me sat down here editing a video or reading. Uh, I've started a new book on YouTube or reading The Stand. Mm. It's just different for me. Yeah, I so. always have to feel like I'm being productive or I'm not happy and is it healthy that's it though isn't that that's the million dollar question i was just pondering then is it healthy or is it unhealthy and in that sense to a degree i guess it's not because what's the worst that's going to happen you're mature enough to know this is affecting me in a negative way Mm. so it just begs the question like yeah is it good for you or is it not good for you yeah I don't think I can change who I am and like I think trying to change who I am would be harder than accepting who I am but just like you said knowing when you're getting to your limits and then scaling it back a little bit like there's a great quote I always said to me like stress plus rest equals growth so like you can't constantly operate at your limit you have to scale it back, you have to rest, you have to recover. And then doing that, you grow and you become better than you were before. So there's definitely a, I don't, I don't want to say it's balance, but I'd say it's notice it, uh, being aware when you're approaching your limits. So I probably had like two times in my life where I properly burnt out, like bad. I was just like very unhappy, no energy, like fatigued all the time. Uh, probably twice, overtraining with the running and then overworking at work. And uh, I know when I'm getting to those kind of areas now, so I just don't take it that far. Because of those experiences? 
Yeah, I'd say definitely, yeah. So let me ask you this. When both of those times happened, did you know it as you were going through or was it just one day you were like, fuck, man, where has this came from? I'm, I'm fucked. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see that coming. In hindsight, it's very obvious for how I've been treating myself or what I've been doing leading up to this. Oh, of course that was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. But when you're immersed in that, you don't, you don't see it coming, right? I didn't right? see it coming. No, no, no. I took on too much responsibility at work too quickly and then was working like 60 hours a week consistently every week for probably like nine months. And uh, I thought at the beginning, the first three months, four months were the best four months of my life, right? Because I was working 60 hours a week. I was getting more responsibility. I was getting everything I wanted, but it just wasn't sustainable. So like got to like six months in and I'd kind of built this, not built, I'd constructed this way of living and working and I didn't have any boundaries. So it was very hard to scale it back and say, well, I, need, I can't work this many hours because I'd become used to it. The team had become used to it. So like it was, uh, yeah, it was like, fuck, what have I done? But yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting one. I've flipped so many times on this. It's a great question about, you know, is it healthy? And like at the mid- I kind of came to a realisation that was like, it's going to be harder to try and, become something I'm not you know yeah you have to look at your own personality and your character traits exactly how you've been over the years you know why try to fight something where yeah they actually want to do and you actually want to be I I feel like I've been that over the last because you spend a lot of time alone right yeah you don't you don't realize how much time you spend alone until you get a little bit older yeah and I've always been constantly I've never sat still, whether it's learning or whatever, you know, like instruments or reading or just immersing myself into like music and and bands and books, fucking mainly books. Um, But then like we just talked about, that is kind of my like, that's what I want to, that's how I want to spend my time. It's how I've chosen to spend my time. I think we just look at it that way because to other people that looks it's like a, a chore, right? You're an you're an exception. Like that's a, a different way to the way most people would want to choose to spend their time. That's it, and, and that's could, why I think we're questioning it. And because then you're comparing yourself to others, especially when you're in a relationship. Like because you spend when like you live with somebody. Like when I live, when me and Megan live with each other now, probably six seven years, but. The way she wants to spend her time is so different to the way I want to spend my time. But she's probably like 99% of the people out there, you know. Whereas I'm very different with how I want to spend my time, so. Um, yeah, I've noticed it because I, I won't watch a TV show anymore. No, no, no. I refuse. Mia always wants to watch one, bless her. And I, I try to, but I'm so uncomfortable. And then think as well, like, what you've because of that feeling and because of the way you are, how much you've done. Yeah. Learning guitar, counselling course. Self-taught, the knowledge man. you have on music, artists, the songs, the lyrics you write, like that doesn't happen if you're com- if you're satisfied with just watching TV or just chilling out or just, you know, having a laugh with the boys in the pub and that. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't. It doesn't. You have to feed into your creativity mm. to allow, to give it room to like, to growth, to be able to become better at things. Yeah. Like what, like you said with the guitar, because you learn guitar mm. really well. And you know, when you get to that stage where you've put in the time and effort and now you're a bit more privy to how it works, like theory wise. And, yeah, that, yeah. and we, we talked about, you know, when you don't have to, learn anymore and you can just pick it up and do a little summit how transcendent it can be in allowing time to pass without you looking at it in a world where time is so observed you know what time is it now what time's dinner what time am i finishing work what time's lunch time what time i got to be away blah 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 blah. at the night time in an attempt like which is how i'm guessing most people in the western world night time is when we're like that's our time yeah especially in weekdays um 
and you know the guitar and like playing to backing tracks and you know, mm. not not having to use Slow. research it's, to expand yeah, your yeah. knowledge to, it, it's it's mental right yeah, yeah. it's 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 that's it that passes flow time sta- that's that flow state where the thousand hours of deliberate practice you've put in where you're going up and down the scales learning the fretboard learning rhythm learning all that is so that when you get to that hour of over a backing track it's effortless. You're not trying to play. You're just playing. You're not. F- you don't have to think. This is an element of thinking. It's yeah. not like completely thoughtless, but it's it's not as it's not forced. You know, it just comes so much more naturally to you because you've put that thousand plus or whatever it is hours in practicing deliberately. Um, yeah, yeah, it it's the results of the enjoyment of it. Yeah, it's like that. That's what you've worked towards, isn't it? Mm. It's like I don't know. It's like when you study for a test and you take the test and you pass. Mm. Obviously, you're not being examined in this. We're just having a laugh and playing and just like um, trying to pass some time. But but that's what it leads to, right? You, yeah, you've yeah. put and you've done research and you've uh, you've took time out of your own time to try and learn something, and then it's it's paid off. Paid it's off. the payoff. It's the payoff yeah, of yeah. the result that you've like you've <coughs> been fucking not longing for, but you've worked towards. You've worked towards it, yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh... So yeah, it's it. But back to the question, like, have you ever felt a sense of accomplishment at anything that you've done? Not really. Not really. No, and like, I've like when I was twenty one, I said to myself, I want like my goals were to buy a house and to earn forty k a year, and I did that. Like, I can't remember. Maybe twenty three, twenty four. I can't remember when we bought the house. And I immediately set my next goals. Like I didn't, I felt like it was almost like, not that was easy, but it's like, that's done now. So I need something else to work towards. So like, I don't, I don't know. You didn't marinate in your victory. <laughs> no, I don't think I've ever marinated in my victory. Like I think it's always been for me straight on to the next thing. I enjoy, I, I can't not have something that I'm working towards. It's like, I don't, for me, it's not the achievement of the goal. I don't do it for the achievement of the goal. Like I enjoy the process of working towards something. So like, well, achieving it doesn't really, is the most meaningless yeah, part of it for me. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> so maybe do you think there is a sense of accomplishment there, but it's just not something that you linger on and therefore you don't see it how... Because we, we asked this question, right? Because it came... It, I can't remember what I've seen it on, but it's like, it's meant to be a big thing, isn't it? Mm. To to sit back and like notice your accomplishments. It's meant to give you a more like fulfilling sort of life that you Why see. Why I, uh, I like, don't know. What does it mean to feel accomplished? That's it. That's what I'm. Like, that, yeah. That's what I'm trying to get at. That yeah. maybe you you feel accomplished, but you don't give a fuck about it. Do you know what I mean? You don't yeah. give a shit. It's like what Ben. I know it's no biggie. Yeah, it's like I know that I love working towards something, and if I've got something in the future that I'm working towards, and I've got a clear plan of what I need to do to get there, I'm happy. Yeah. I don't see what like sitting down and thinking about all the good things I've done or like achievements, say not all the good things I've done, but all the things I've achieved. Like I don't get anything from that. Do you not know? You don't know that if you've not done it. No, nah, see, I don't think I, I don't know. I'm just playing, no, no, de- it's pl- good. Yeah, playing yeah, it's devil's good advocate about, here. But like, because they say it's a little bit slightly different, but you know, with gratitude, right? A lot of the people like who practice gratitude to like a, you know, a very um, religious degree, not religious in like the Bible sense, but you know, in the like everyday sort of sense that if you're not grateful for things, yeah, it blocks the, (laughs) obviously this is talking in terms Mm. of, you know, like the universe and that, and I don't know how realistic this all is, but, but, it blocks things in terms of more 
things that you would end up being grateful for come mm. in your way. Mm. You know, if you're not grateful for the things that you should be grateful for, and we'll go into gratitude and all the things like that that's on those lists, yeah. then um, you burden yourself because you, you become blind to such like qualities of life mm-hmm. and such things that you take for granted, right? You end mm-hmm. up taking things for granted because you're not aware that, like, fuck, man, like, that's such simplicity. Yeah. And I've just let it go go on by. And I think, to tie it back to what we are just saying, you know, about, about a reason why reflecting on achievements and accomplishments could be a good thing is when you reflect on your gratitude, I think you become more empathic. You become more aware mm. and it opens doors for your sight and your like internal way of thinking that it's just makes your day like such a such a bigger improvement and i'm not speaking from like someone who's like i, I practice gratitude every day man i fall short of the mark and mm. have to remind myself very fucking often that pick up your chin to be great pick yeah. up your chin man and fucking shake off that little like you know, little yeah, yeah. Um, sort of heebie-jeebies you got on your fucking back today and, mm. you know, try and pull your head out of clouds. And nine times out of ten, man, I forget to do it, but but when it works, I really, you see the woods from the trees and you realise, like, fuck, man, there's there's so much to be grateful for. It's a skill, though. It's a skill, and it's a skill you've got to learn, practice, practice develop. It's pure character development. It it's is. fucking hard to do. It's really hard to do, and it's hard to it's hard to maintain. It's hard to sort of grab a hold of it and say, fuck, we're running with this now. We're sticking with it. You lose it all the time, man. I lose it all the time. Yeah, and it's a hard one to... It's almost like a state of mind. It's like you have to look for things at the beginning you have to almost look for things to be grateful it's almost like when i first did it it was like write three things you're grateful for every day just three things i couldn't do it most days i couldn't sit and think of three things i was grateful for other than the obvious and just repeating it like i'm grateful i've got a house over my head grateful i've got food on the table don't get me wrong there are things to be grateful for but there's so much more to be grateful there for. is um, the way a certain conversation when they're at work the way had the dinner you had with your girlfriend or made with your girlfriend your favorite song that came on on the radio tim ferris actually tim ferris is it's uh, like his, a podcast yeah author, his name he talks about, about and he's like uh, one of, he goes through his journey he's like well, on this day i was grateful for the way this t the, the t-shirt i was wearing the the way the material felt against my skin it was a new merino wool and he was like it sounds stupid or it sounds like a trivial thing but it's like if you can be grateful for something as a, the way a t-shirt feels against your skin imagine what you'll be when you've got x y whatever it when is you find life. out like your yeah. girlfriend's pregnant or whatever when, you know, it is like yeah some, so someone's ill gets better like man just yeah they will see the obvious things in life i know what you mean though when you said you know, repeating the same things. It's hard. When I was trying to do it on a daily basis in the morning, I felt like a bit of a bullshit because I was just reciting things that were like, to a degree, they were obvious, but to a degree, they were like, well, that's the same things I was grateful for yesterday. Yeah. And they and, and, I'd, and they just feel like the things I think I should be saying, you know, mm. house, food, blah, 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 girlfriend, blah. Girlfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've got a job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's why I was saying it's like something you have to practice because it's not like our natural kind of just normal state of mind to be looking for things that we should be grateful for. It's something I think you can get to, but it's not like a natural... It doesn't come naturally to me. I'm not always just thinking, oh, that, you know, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for this. Yeah, that's, and I want to try to get it to a place where it becomes something I enjoy doing instead of so, something I got a tick off. A chore. A chore. Tick box. Because at the moment it's, it lies in a place where it's like, remember to be grateful. You know, I don't want to say remember to be grateful. So I, I want to say I'm grateful. Mm. So it, it takes like, again, it's, I think it's one of those like deliberate practice every day, suffering through it at first for the first, however long it takes before it does start coming natural to you. And you're on the bus and so I don't know, someone gives you their seat or something, you know, I'm grateful for that or whatever it is. Um, yeah, it's, uh, there's also, if, remember, you did the Sam Harris the Waking, waking up, up app. 
Yeah, I've done it for he a has few some months. Great. So he, you've got the 10 minute morning meditation, but then you've got moments where throughout the day you just get a notification. It's I like, remember that. It's a minute clip. Yes, I do remember that. And he talks a lot about gratitude. And one of the ones he says is like um, being stuck in traffic. And he's like, he comes at it two ways. He says, you're stuck in traffic on your way home from work. And he says, there's probably millions of people that would give anything they could to be in the position you're in now, where they have a job that they're driving home from. Uh, they've got a car that they can drive and uh, they have a home to go to. And then he also says, one day you'll be that old, 70, 80, where you would do anything to swap with your younger self who's stuck in traffic on their way home from work. And that's true. So true. And you have to remember that. And that's why he's like, and it's like, and then that's how he says it, you should be grateful you should change your language and I'm I I'm not I don't have to be stuck in traffic. I get to be stuck in traffic because I'm leaving a job I've got I've got to drive to a home where I've got a family. Um, but yeah that older one really got me. It was like at some point in your life those trivial boring moments that you wish time flew and you could just get through, suffer through, mm -hmm. you'll give anything. You'll give anything to go back to that time, yeah. That's true, because I watched a video yesterday on YouTube and um, it was a TED Talks, actually. Yeah, yeah. They have quite a lot on gratitude, different people speaking. And this woman, um, she played a video of a, a kid and a man and they were both asked the same question about what does today mean to you? Mm -hmm. Sorry, and the man was an elderly man, really, really old. And I can't remember the kid's answer, but it was completely other end of the spectrum to the old man's and the old man was just trying to drive home that you think today is just another day and when you're old you realize it's not mm -hmm. like how lucky you are to to have an extra day just another day just another day and and the fact that you'll never get that day back yeah ever time's the one thing you can't ever time is buy. the one thing you can't buy and i try and implement that in the way i see so, you know, like throughout my whole life, my grandparents have been insanely close to yeah, yeah. Like my nan, I speak to on a daily basis. I've spoken to her twice today. I've seen her yesterday. I see her and speak to her every day or see her as yeah, much yeah. as I can. Um, but that's one of the people that I can look at and say, like, that I use gratitude for in the, what we're just talking about. Mm. Cause, cause I see her aging and I see it in my mom too, in the most nicest way possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think when you see elderly people getting old or you see, you know, middle-aged people getting more middle-aged, that drives home gratitude does, a bit more. Yeah. Because growing up, man, do you not feel that those days, it came out of nowhere to me. My nan was never old, man, in my eyes. And then one day she was just very old, old yeah. very old, yeah. And I never saw it coming, even though it was happening, right? So I just... I use her as a bit of a catalyst in my own like gratitude life. Mm. Right? right. Well, she rang me today and she's okay. And I appreciate that. And, you're you know? grateful for and I'm grateful for that. Yeah. That's because one, yeah. anyone's on borrowed time, man. Mm. No one knows nothing about when your last day on earth is going to be, what it's yeah. going to be like, what can get taken away from you in the blink of an eye. Oh, mate, don't. It's scary, but it's it something to ponder and without being like morbid. I think to really just be like fucking brutally honest, it's like that's stuff you have to think about. It is stuff you have to think about. How many about. people, you know, passed away young or houses get repossessed, yeah. get laid off from their job, they're lose doing or lose well. a family member in the blink of an eye, man. And yeah. it's always just a random fucking day. Yeah, You've yeah, probably yeah, had yeah. it. I've had it, me. You're chilling on a Sunday, you're chilling on a week night. Your, and your, changes. your day is just normal. And yeah. in, in a couple of moments, mm. you've got news and it's just like, whoa. Mm. And it has that eerie sort of feeling. Um, they're just like the negative sides of life that you that when you think about them, you put things into perspective. You remind me there of like when we're talking about Sam Harris, and he started just going off about gratitude and about what you don't have, and he's like, he starts saying, you know, you're not terminally ill. Yeah, yeah. 
you're not living in famine. Yeah. And he like... He, you could have been born in one of the many countries yeah, in the world. Yeah, he's a bit more statistical with it where he's like, but this is the amount of people that are starving right yeah. now. This is the amount of people that countries are at war. Uh, this is the amount of homeless people. Mm. Drug addicts. Mm. Terminally ill people. Mm. People in and out of hospital. The list is endless, man. Does it diminish your... Or does it dismiss your problems, though? No. Like, should you... I think it's a great way to look at it, yeah? I do, because I think someone like... Or people in our situation where we're born... Jersey's probably one of the best places in the world you can be born. Like, yes, house prices are not high, but they're high in most cities. But in terms of, like, opportunity... Crim- criminality. Crimi- like, 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 I don't crime, know like, going to break into my house, chop my head off, man. Everything like that, yeah, it's one of the best places that you could be born. Um... However, and like I do think comparing and, and realizing like you, you like all those things you just listed, but does it dismiss your problems and does it make you then think that your problems shouldn't be problems? Yeah, so uh, personally, I don't think it diminishes your problems at all. How I use it as a reminder to get my head out of the clouds when I'm moaning about stuff I shouldn't be. Mm. Does that make sense? So I'm what I mean by that is, a problem to me is something like, you know, that's bad, you know. If, 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 if it's something slightly severe in that, that's going to be my problem. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm not going to cry about getting fired because there's someone terminally ill out yeah. there. And I could be terminally ill and I'm not, so I'm not going to cry about getting fired or, or be disheartened about getting dumped or, you know, something like that because people because there's someone's worse, I don't have any problems. I think the way I use it is on the days where I want to moan about trivial, about stuff. trivial irrelevant things, yeah that's when I try and bring the focus into like use gratitude now or focus a bit more on gratitude. That, that's a good question though, because it does, it does. I agree. I agree. You have a sense of, oh, well now I shouldn't moan about anything. It's right? almost, it's like subjective, isn't it? There's like certain problems which you know are trivial. You know, you shouldn't be moaning about yeah. that. You know, it should, you know what I mean? You should be more grateful. Whereas there's certain things where, like you said, it's okay to feel that and it's okay that it is a problem because it's genuinely something that will upset you or cause you to think things. So, but yeah, it's uh, it's another one. He's got another class one where he says about the language that you use and he says like for a week or a day or I can't remember what he says, um, change the language that they use. So don't say I have to go to work now or I have to do the dishes or I have to cook dinner. He says, say, I get to. Oh, yeah. So he's like, I get to go to work. I get to do the dishes. I get to cook dinner. Um, and I thought it was a class way of reframing it. And Yeah, because it transcends it from burdens to privileges. Yeah, yeah. It's not I have to, it's I get to, yeah. It's no longer a chore. It's something that you get to do because yeah. you're lucky to have it. Yeah, a burden something you bear, right? Something that weighs you down and... And it's again, it's that law of attraction thing about negativity and positivity. positivity. You are what you think. How you carry yourself so is who true. you become. Yeah. Like and, and like how powerful your thoughts are. Like it just comes out of you. Like if you're naturally, if you're just a negative person in general, you give off that vibe to the world. Like the other people perceive that of you. Yeah. You know I mean, they don't want to tell you. You can stuff. see it, man. It's in your aura. It, yeah. It's in your psyche. Remember the fucking, the twits, Roll Doll? They're two miserable yeah, yeah. fucking yeah, evil yeah, yeah. moany fuckers and they end up looking ugly and old. And, and it's like, if someone's miserable, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? You're a negative person, yeah? So you go into work and you're that person that just moans all day. So then fuck your manager... Work, fuck this, uh, fuck that. Oh, did you see that? Well, yeah, I'm interested. Da, da, da. So then you don't get considered by your co- like your manager doesn't really spend the time with you because they can't be dealing with the negativity so then you don't get put forward for promotions and you yeah. don't get put forward so then you become negative about that and you think life's out to get you then you don't get invited to social events because all you do is moan about work exactly and yeah. then you moan that you don't have a social life so it's like a you inadvertently shoot yourself in yeah. the foot i mean it's not easy i think i understand that life can be tough and like I've probably been guilty of it sometimes, but there's like a lot of people have and so much going for them that there's like little reason to be so negative about life. Yeah, there is. And there's so much that's within your control just in terms of the language that you use, practicing gratitude every day. 
yeah, it's, it's it's hard to kind of feel sorry for people. I think. Yeah, it takes a lot of self work. You have to self reflect. Yeah. You have to analyze stuff, and that means fucking stopping still sometimes, mm. looking at left, right, up, down, good and bad, make changes. Mm. You know what? What can I sieve out? What's not working for me? I need to get rid of that. Yeah. Oh, that fucking that made me happy, man. That made yeah, me good. Yeah. I'm holding on to that. I'm running with that. It's it's like you have to take control of your life and responsibility. Responsibility. For the things that you can like. There will always be things in your life that you cannot control. Yeah, where you were born, how smart or not smart you are, um, what kind of family background you come from, like all these stuff you can't control. But there is so many things within your life that you can control, and if you've got, if you take responsibility for those, and like you say, take control of the things you can, you can put so much together in your life that it will make a difference on all these other areas. Yeah, you. That's so. That's so. 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 So true, mm-hmm. and it's working progress as well, which I think you know slips your mind. And it's that it's not like oh, well, I was grateful today, but I, I was grateful today on a Monday, and I still had a shit Tuesday. It doesn't work like that, right? You have to. It's trials. It everything's trial and error. Mm. And it's like this. It's and up it's, down. It up, is down. up down. But I seen. I can't remember who done it. But he was like, basically, it's not like it's never a straight line up. It's up, down, up, down, up. But you're gradually getting higher with all the downs and the ups, so you're going up. But there will be downs, like you'll have bad days, bad weeks. Yeah, you can't always be happy. Mm. But that's, like, I don't think that should be the per- like the goal to always be happy. It shouldn't. Because it's like, you don't, it's like, it's having, it's experiencing It's not life a prize the, then. Yeah, it's not. And it's like experiencing life at its lowest makes you appreciate life at its highest more so if you were constantly if you're constantly happy you just get used to, like, yeah. then the, the the um the luxury of feeling what happiness is it's not wears like, off yeah because yeah. it's your new neutral it's a novelty it's just your baseline yeah it's your baseline it's mm. your neutral it's your standard and you, you don't how you meant to differentiate a day from day if you're happy 24 mm. 7 mm. i mean if you could do that it's class but but you're meant to be content with being fine, just yeah. nothing. And then you look back and you're like, remember that day, man? What a class day. Mm. I was well happy that day. And it just internalizes in your memory as something a little bit more special, doesn't it? Yeah. No, definitely. It's, uh, this guy explains it as a scale of like one to ten. He's a endurance athlete. And then he, so he started as a triathlete and then he went on to do like crazy endurance challenges. So challenges. So he walked across like the Antarctic uh, solo, s- carried a sled of like 300 pounds, I want to say, which had all his food, his supplies on for this like 60 day trip. And he was like, um, he kind of explained it as he, he sees life as a scale and it's like a scale of one to 10. Uh, one being the worst possible scenario you could ever imagine, 10 being the best life you could ever imagine or experience everything you ever wanted. And he's like, the reason I do these endurance and challenges and I push myself to my limits is because I want to experience life at both ends. So when i walking through the Antarctic on my own, dragging a sled, it's, I'm 40 days in, I can't see... <laughs> I'm not eat, you know what I mean the, Whoa, my who the fuck is that my island I can't remember his name he does a joke Colin O'Brady I'll double check it's on Rogan it's on Rogan yeah. obviously I'll, uh, I'll send you the episode and he's like my eyelids are frozen I'm running out of food there's a storm coming if I don't get my tent up I'm not going to get it up for the night and then that's me and then he's like being at that lowest of the possible low when you come back to normal life and you're experiencing <laughs> just seeing my girlfriend. He's like, that's now a 10. He's like, yes, oh, mate, that's insanely is, smart. Isn't it? It's such yeah. a good way of framing it. And I was like, holy shit. And then he was like, if you look at most nor- like most day-to-day people, if you take the same scale, they're probably living life between four and six. They're just in the middle lane, not really experiencing life, not experiencing what it's like to be at the lowest of the lows. And not experience what life's like at 10. You're just in a four to six. And I was like, shit, I don't want to live in a four to six. I want to 
it just it was a lovely way to frame it. I was like, oh wow. I'll take the three so I can have the eight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's cool, man. He's manufacturing his rock bottoms. Yeah, manufacturing his rock bottoms. But you have to these days. Unless some unfortunate event outside of your control, like you lo- you lost a family member, you lost your job, which then you lost your house. Like that is tough and that's gonna be the lowest of the lows. But for most people, Life is good. Life is comfortable. You've got a job. You've got a somewhere to live. You've got heating in the winter. You've got food. You've got base. You've got a lot of, like, throughout history, this is, like, the best time to ever have lived because uh, somebody on, this is class, crazy quote, not quote, but crazy fact, but somebody on uh, the lower income in America lives better than the richest man in the world from like the 1920s or 30s because technology is advanced accessibility like a fridge freezer people didn't have fridge freezers Mm. back then they couldn't store food the way we can electricity things like that so it's like life is pretty comfortable yeah and if you look at the evolution of time right what did you say 100 years ago yeah i think it's about that's basically 50 years ago nothing in the scheme of things so, and I'd let you go. There's great summer to be grateful for right there. There is, yeah. But that's why he says you've got to like, that Colin O'Brady, he's like, I put myself in these challenging situations. I push myself to my limits because it makes me appreciate the, the normal good times so much more. And without that, like, you don't really have any struggle in your life, do you? No, you don't. Because it's so easy to fall into complacency. So easy. And I think physical struggle is a big one. Like... And that's why I think I've loved the running and the endurance challenges because it's like f- physical endurance and pushing yourself physically when you think like, when you think you're done, you've got nothing left, right? And then you push past that and you go another 25 kilometers, 30 kilometers. It's like this crazy kind of realization that you can go so much further than you thought you could. It's like, and until you get, you, you have to really push to what you think are your limits to then be able to push past that for that realisation to happen. And then it just like transfers to all these other areas of your life. It's like this self-belief that like, you remember when you were 40K in, you still had 40K to go. Oh, you know what I mean? You were done. A dark time. Dark, dark time. But somehow, like looking back when I did it, it was like, I don't know how, what was going through, like how I managed to do it. But I just kind of, I pushed through and there was this moment where I was like second wind. I was like, yeah, I just kept like loads of positive self-talk. Like, and I was just like, you're not quitting. So you can either just keep going. We can keep moaning about it or you can just get it done. And then step after step, you manage to get through another 40 K and it's like this. Yeah. It's like, it's just just a a huge kind of self-belief that you get. I think it's like physical activity pushing yourself physically is one of the easiest ways to get there and get that realization because you don't have it like in your life generally on a day-to-day basis like we work eight hours a day pretty cushy air-conditioned office you know i mean it's not there's no real real struggle in your life unless you manufacture it yeah there's a lot of monotonous repetition right and that will just be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Even the weekends are similar. You try and spice them up a little bit by mm. doing, you know, something a little bit different. Something a little bit that. different. But you are, you're tied to what's available towards you. Mm. But physical stuff, it's it's uncommon. Yeah, it's not something you've been doing for years. Mm. So that's why you you have that sense that you're breaking like a mental barrier that you've yeah, never yeah. never crossed before, mm. and that's brand new territory. Mm. And now you're looking at fucking things completely different. But yeah, but like like if I said to you about running a marathon, so forty two kilometers, do you think that's something you could ever do? Like when you sit here today, is that something you're like, no, there's no way? Or, I I wouldn't count myself out now. I'm not you... much of a runner. I can run on treadmills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Longest I've ever run is ten miles. I think. 10 miles was at 16k. So, yeah, yeah. an extra 40. Um, but I know, obviously, you need to be resilient, go through training, mm. blah, 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 blah. I got you as a friend who's yeah, done yeah. it a few times. So, I, I reckon I could get there. There's no doubt in you. There's no doubt that you could run a marathon. But it's like, it's, uh, 
you might be slightly different in that you're more of a positive, but most people would rule it out straight away. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, that's too much for me. Like, something I could never do. But with, like, consistent training, like you say, resilience, discipline, sticking at it, and then mental strength on the day. Like, I honestly think there's so many people out there that could do it, unless, for obvious reasons, health conditions mm. come in. That's obvious. That's an exception. But, um, yeah, it's... Uh, do you, do you put that as one of your biggest accomplishments of life? Not my biggest accomplishments, but to, it was... I was trying to treat you. I won't get you. No, no, it's a, not as a biggest accomplishment, but it was like, it was just that realisation. My first marathon, I was like, I realised that with consistent training over time, there isn't much I couldn't do in the physical endurance realm. Like, I would take on anything now. Like, I would do, I've got loads of stuff that I want to do, and I'm going to do. My next one's, like, doing a sub-three-hour marathon, but, like, I know, I'm not, like, oh yeah, it's, it's hard to explain. Yeah, it's just well, a, 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 a realisation that there's not much that you cannot do if you put your mind to it, and it's discipline, it's not easy, discipline. The training is the hardest part, but, yeah. I was about to say, um... Yeah, and what a perfect sort of, if that's your mentality, mm. how good is it that that's what you've chosen as your vice? Because yeah, because yeah. boundaries can be pushed every time. What I mean by that is, like, like you said, you've run a marathon. But a marathon's not the be all and end all. There's, some, there's always going to be something more with running, isn't there? There's no Because you like, could run till you're fucking dead. You can go quicker. You can go you further. Can go, yes. You can go high. You can go further and further and further. Okay, yeah. well, I went this far. Um, it's one of those, it has an infinite mm. result scheme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty fucking cool, man. Yeah. No, it was, uh, yeah. Because there's some things when it's done, it's done. Exactly, yeah. No, I was happy. Like, it just happened naturally as well. When I started running, it was never the intention to do that type of thing or even to do a marathon it just happened we started running then Matt, Matt started running then we started pushing each other and then it's like why don't we try a marathon and then once we've done a marathon just got the bug got just the got bug. hooked that's sick yeah so what's next on the agenda then for the running sub three hour marathon I'm going first week of uh, sub three hours yeah. so for me who's not too privy to it what's that in the terms of what was your last one my last the quickest I've ever done is a 3.38 so you'd have to knock nearly 40 minutes off. 40 minutes off, yeah. So your training regime to be able to accomplish that would incorporate faster runs? Yeah, so Further without getting runs? like too technical. So like I try and follow like it's called the 80-20 rule. So believe it or not, to run faster, you should actually spend most of your runs running very slow. Well, this is what... I've read and it works for me. So, like, let's say I'm doing 80k Toys in a week. In the hand, man. Yeah, let's say I'm doing 80k in a week. I will do probably 65 of those kilometers at like 515 pace, which is like a 145, 150 heart rate for me. Okay. So it's low, below your aerobic, aerobic threshold. And then I'll do the last 15, 20k of the week. High intensity, max heart rate, like pushing it all I can, either intervals, short intervals, or longer extended intervals. Um, so it will be a mix of both. It's, and when I say 80 20 rule, 80% of your runs slow, very slow, 20% of my runs very intense, hard. So you, that's you, where I've seen the most progress. It's worked, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So I did for a year, I did completely low intensity like probably nine months where didn't get my heart rate over like 150 and uh, built a really strong base but wasn't seeing any improvement in my pace and then started doing intervals and then just minutes coming like I dropped like 40 seconds off my pace at the same heart rate and then managed to break the five minute per kilometre at the same heart rate so I could do like 450s 455s it's a lot of running talk and that, but it's yeah, like, that's like the pace per kilometer. So that was always my goal to get below five minutes per kilometer at the same heart rate. There you go. Like that just yeah. shows you for me, who's not knowledgeable in that subject, how much you've learned in the short time that you've been doing it. Yeah. Cause you have to, you have to become knowledgeable of how your own body works. How right? your body you need to works, know particular heart rates 
optimization, optimizing your training, nutrition. I've tried like five different diets, vegan, carnivore, low carb, high carb, read all about each one, sleep, running, like there's this idea, and it was funny, I was trying to do like a write about this the other day, there's an idea called like a keystone habit, so it's like a habit that you form that makes it easier to build or form other habits and routines, and I'll give you an example, like I started running, and within two, three months, I was hooked, and I was like really into it, and I wanted to get better at running, so running, it forced me to reassess other areas of my life, so it forced me to look at what I was eating, and then I started forming healthy eating habits, it started forced me to look at my sleep because everything I read said sleep is the most important thing for recovery. So it forced me to improve my sleeping habits, start morning routine, all the things we talk about. And it also forced me to look and try and stop smoking. Mm. So it forced, because I was running and because I wanted to do well at running, it forced me to look at these other areas. But it made making changes in these other areas so easy because I was eating. I wanted to eat better because I wanted to perform better running. So it wasn't like, if I'd have just, most people, if they just start to do healthy eating, if they don't have a reason for it, it can be difficult. But because running was like this keystone habit where it's like my overriding, it's good. it just made changes in those other areas so much easier. Yeah, I've never heard of that, but yeah, yeah, it makes loads one. of sense. Man. Exercise is like a big one for most people. Yeah, because it gives you incentive to do, to do other yeah, things. Yeah, exercise is like, because it, it goes back to obviously the, the drinking thing we were talking about, right? Mm. Which obviously if you take that away from your life, if there's an absence of, you know, alcohol intake and having late nights, yeah. you can't do your running, you can't yeah, do your yeah. exercises, or at least you, you f- you're you physically not really capable. Mm. So it's, it's endless. Because mm. all the self-help books you read, all the... Um, the books about um, just, yeah, health, basically, mm. sleep, diet. So it's like the you're just like knocking them all. Yeah, it's like yeah the like, fundamentals, that's it. You can it. get that's like what crazy with it. And there's so many like personal development books and uh, different strategies, different tips, different ideas. But there's like a core theme throughout them is like uh, your exercise, it's your health, exercise, sleep nutrition like and if you get those three right it's like a good solid foundation for them whatever else you want to do in terms of like self-improvement and stuff like that yeah it helps with everything mm. the knock-on effect it has is just yeah immense. yeah yeah exactly yeah so you've got to really work from the ground up mm. and nipping those things in the bud gives you the capability to mm. to like you said just do other, other fucking thing, things yeah. do you think you would ever so you obviously go to the gym. Yeah. But the gym, like for me, I got bored of the gym because it was like, for me, it was like, I, I like having a goal or something to work towards. Do you think you'll ever, uh, in the physical exercise side of things, do uh, an event, a challenge, a race, something to... Possibly. I would like to burn out as in come to like the conclusion of what I'm doing now. Mm. My goal was to put on 10 kilo. No, it was to put on five kilograms this year. I didn't really know how long that would take. I was like yeah, yeah. naive. Yeah. Happened quite quickly. And so I've put on nine now, nice. nine kilograms. Um, so our milestone is going to be 10. For this year? For this year, yeah. If we get one more kilogram for them, you know, that's double what I thought I was going to do. Didn't know it was going to be. I mean, it's required a lot of eating and a lot of working out, but. Again, I'm, I've I've gotten quite into the habit and the hobby. The hobby's enjoyable, so that's just that's going to be goal number one. Mm. I'm going to try add another five onto the ten. Nice. And I think once I've done that, there'll be quite a, a big difference in like my physical appearance and stuff mm. like that. And then Are you I, see invisible differences. In I am, yeah, yeah, I am, which has been quite nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first couple of kilograms is like. Putting weight on a skeleton, man. <laughs> it was it needed it, yeah. It needed it, yeah. It wasn't too hard to do. Um, I know there's going to come a time when I start to plateau. Mm. I think it'll be soon. Um, but, like, with the going to the gym, you know, I'm lifting heavier than I've ever lifted. 
there's only really my like two second or third ever attempt at really yeah, getting yeah. my head and I had a couple of goes when I was a bit younger but I was still immature and I wasn't mm. really doing it the way I'm doing it now um but I'm enjoying it to the point where nice. I want to get I want to lift heavy and keep yeah, going yeah. And, and and set new goals and you know I've got everything wrote down I've got my my Big schedule and I've yeah. got my spreadsheet and stuff like that and and like we were just talking about mm. I was doing well a couple of times and then I went and had heavy weekends mm. and it fucked up for a week or two. And because I was like analyzing statistics, weight, it. weight, kilograms on weights, my own weight I meant and stuff like that. Yeah. I noticed it. I was so, it was obvious. It was clear as day. I could fucking see it for what it was. Mm. And that's why another thing that's helped me knock the bevies on the head is that I can't do both of those things. I just, can't, I can't, yeah, I yeah. fucking can't, man. And it's extended period, like off the booze, you can't, even if you're out every couple of weeks, yeah, it's like extended periods off the booze, you just see so much progress in such a shorter amount of time because it's that sustainable, consistent Exactly, working. man, yeah. Like, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. You're like, you... It, it was doing this, mate. I'd get to a certain place, right? Let's go back to the beginning. Get yeah, to a certain yeah, place. Yeah. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's go certain. All right, not back to the beginning, but let's go halfway. Yeah, yeah. And it's not like that anymore. Do you know what I mean? It's and it, it is. Oh uh, yeah, consistency is key. I mean, yeah. how many times have you heard that? But it's, it's fucking. So simple, it's it's facts. Yeah. It is facts. So yeah, and my eating, obviously working from home has given me the privilege of being to e- able to scoff my face, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. With like bowls of pasta and stuff. And yeah, yeah. my, f- my dinner's always fresh. So I know I'm not eating too un- I like unhealthy, yeah, unhealthy. Yeah. Um, but diet's always going to be one of those. You don't know if you're doing right from wrong oh, with the yeah, amount of so information that's out there these days. Yeah. There, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I, I, I'm enjoying this. I'm going to keep it up. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to get to a certain place. Um, I think once we've put on 15 kilograms all together, that's when I'm going to try and turn it into more like muscle, like defined muscle yeah, as yeah. opposed to just like weight. And then, yeah, we might be looking good, you know, you know, be feeling all right. And that's when I think, right, and then I'll take a different approach in, you know, we were talking about what's, what's that thing you're doing when you hurt your shoulder? It's CrossFit. CrossFit. There's, there's loads, there's a couple of things, but I'm, I want a new hobby as well next year. Hmm. Yeah, I've got the year off before I start my level, the diploma in the counselling course. Yeah, I've been thinking about a new hobby. Just a, a little new challenge. Like I, I thought about an Ironman, which is uh, swim, cycle, run. Back to back. Back to back. Swim. So you get out of sea and start cycling somewhere. Yeah. And what is it? So I think I might be wrong. I think the swim's two thousand meters. The cycle can be the full Ironman. I think the cycle is 160 kilometers, and then the mar- you finish with a marathon. Me looking up to the sky like I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> like trying it's to far, work out what 160 far. kilometers. But the reason I'm quite keen in it is because I, I'm a terrible swimmer, so I'd have to learn how to swim. I'd have to get lessons, proper le- start from the beginning. And same at cycling, I'm a bad cyclist. I don't have the leg strength, despite all the running. Cycling, I'm terrible at so. Um, I think it'd be a good one because it's got the physical aspect, but also the learn something new. <laughs> Swimming's fucking hard, man. So hard, mate. <laughs> mate. I was trying to um, I, I I took that up. I was like, so I knew I knew swimming was hard to do. Yeah. I knew how much it gassed you, so I said, oh, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna get an Aqua Splash membership. <laughs> I'm gonna start going at six in the morning. So I used to leave my gaff up. Must have went about three times. Like, you think? We need a plague or something, man, because there's too many people <laughs> in this world. And um, I got to the the Aqua Splash, you know, like the adults one. And it's just so like riddled with anxiety. I'm like, like, getting in the thing. Which and lane you go pe- in? Which lane? And then How you quick. have to, and I had to maintain a pace, which was well faster <laughs> than any pace I could do. So the geezer behind me wasn't fucking rim jobbing me. So I was like trying to go. I made it two laps, yeah. <laughs> and I was breathing through my ass. Uh, I had to hop out and I thought, you've literally, yeah, everyone's just seen you come here for about Dude, eight minutes. <laughs> I don't think I ever went back, man. I was showering for longer. It's horrible, isn't it? It's uh, it's the breathing aspect that throws me. It's like h- holding your breath while, imagine holding your breath while running and only being able to breathe. And like, 
Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it it's, is. Uh, Basically, no. And right, if you want to get good at it, you have to buy the gear. You have to buy the. No, obviously not to get good at it, but little like little speeds and yeah, that fucking hat on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rip your skin off. Them, like, it's all about fucking technique. foreskin helmet. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Uh, I think it's more about technique with swimming though, rather than like. That's why I think it'd be a good one because it's all the like, spin at the end. The kicks the <laughs> to go back spin. round. Fuck me, man. All the different strokes. There's like different styles of stroke. <sighs> But yeah, I don't know. Maybe um, we spoke about also Brazil, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, maybe didn't we? Yeah, I would love to do to get back into a like martial art, a, 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 combat, a, a sport. combat sport, yeah. become a little bit you know stronger in that. Learn how to. I like... think Brazilian Jiu Jitsu would be a good one. I think oh, I don't think I could do MMA because I don't think I could handle like the kicking and the, the kicking and that. I used to do Aikido for a few years. Is that similar? It's just kicks and. Yeah, I think it's. Um... Now it's not as violent as like kicks and kickboxing. It's more defensive, right? In the way that oh, you're grabbing me. <laughs> now, I'm, now you're not grabbing yeah, me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's um, can't remember anything except from the old twist of the wrist getting out of like <laughs> uh, stuff like that. But yeah, it's, it's, they're nerve wracking, isn't it? Start starting something like that because you're there's a load of people that are now good because they've been going mm. for a while. You have got to go through the um, thrill. <laughs> If you want to call it out of being the new guy. Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys. Um I've just yeah, came man. to learn how to fucking get chucked about. And yeah, there, there's a few it's out just there. The time. It's like we've got so much going on at the minute. Like do I have time to f- another hobby where I'm gonna take it seriously, you know, where I've gonna actually commit the the time to it. And, yeah, you need to persevere. But then you're also allowed to try things. If you don't like it, it's not for mm. you. And and obviously it's uh there's an element of violence to it, isn't it? Which is always a bit like mm. it's not like fighting out in the street or like after <laughs> after yeah. a nightclub, is it? It's in like this very controlled environment where it's and just kind of daunting. It's it's like it's I think it's very humbling. Where like even if you think you've got a bit about you or you know, I bet, if somebody yeah. has even like a I think it's like oh what I don't know what the color system is but like a white belt or a blue belt like very early beginners if they've done like three months of basic training they'll have you in like a fucking headlock <laughs> within a minute yeah but you're all red you're like yeah Help me. <laughs> you can't breathe <laughs> tapping out um, but yeah maybe and I find you always get at least one like egotistical dude man yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. smash fuck out of him <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I the hate those guys, guys. Yeah, yeah the new guys yeah come here I'm with you <laughs> start I like oh, fuck ragdolling you around yeah but, yeah no we need I, I'm up for trying something like that mm. but again it's all that character development it's putting yourself out there even the mental mental aspects of it helps you out in so many ways when's the last time you put yourself in a proper uncomfortable position exactly Saturday. No, sorry. Oh, exactly. sorry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I said, what are you doing Saturday? <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a while, man. Uh, last time I started And summer. this actually comes to, sorry. Yeah, yeah. About what you were saying before about a sense of accomplishment. Like, think about it. <laughs> yeah, we've done that on purpose, full so. <laughs> <laughs> But that's probably where I'm, I wish I'd had more... Uh, of a sense of accomplishment. I'm constantly putting myself in sit- like uncomfortable situations. We are like doing this podcast. This is like, this was something I never thought I would do because it like, it scared me being on camera, horrible, listening to your own voice, horrible. Like it's uncomfortable. And the first probably three months we do it will be a bit uncomfortable. But um, like you say, putting yourself in those uncomfortable situations is it's growth that's where you grow and that's where you learn um and i think we're i'm good at that i'd say you're good at that as well and that's one area i should probably take more of a bit of a stock and say yeah well done yeah you know, I, i've done branched out there yeah and i'm yeah. involving like a little pokemon yeah I'm becoming a better ben, <laughs> Leveling a be- up. better josh mm. yeah we have yeah look even starting this starting a couple this. Of weeks ago we we had a couple of flopped episodes where it didn't record properly technical issues nothing to do with us and what i'm getting at is from that day one which doesn't seem long ago at all because it wasn't no, long ago at all no. right to today, to today whatever yeah. day that me it might be one month two months right the progression's been immense it has been yeah. through our knowledge through your knowledge your editing 
mm-hmm. uh, how how to do this, mm-hmm. how to set all this up. Setting up, but even just for us being on, I remember our first episode when we sat at the bench that way and we, it's we, the one that didn't record. When we spoke for 15 minutes yeah. before we even press record to try to get and, uh, simmered. So Simmer. nervous. I was like, just like, yeah, just nervous about it. Whereas now even it's getting a little bit easier each time. It's like the more we do it, it gets just a bit more comfortable. Just yeah, we've done it today. It. Yeah, we, did. we didn't even say, all right, let's go. Mm-hmm. We just sat down. Into it. Yeah, we did. We, did. we yeah. accidentally, like, inadvertently just went yeah, yeah. Through, through the chat we were having, mm. which I think was good. No, it was. We definitely, definitely some improvements. It's always going to be hard for that because, as well, the, the beast of it is that you're, how do I word this? You're inevitably putting yourself in a position to be, have other people's opinions vulnerable vulnerable yeah because where where, where it is it's social media right yeah so that's youtube it's spotify it's wherever else it might end up mm. here come people talking about it i like it i like it i don't like it i don't like mm. it that kid's a fucking idiot yeah, yeah. oh that kid's pretty funny what is he that saying? kid's annoying thinking, that kid yeah. has no clue he's well off of it oh actually he was on the money i don't know like yeah, but yeah that's yeah. they're all possibilities um so then then that's another thing where it's like you know now we're we're Looking the adversity in the face. Yeah, putting yourself out there. Something to it, yeah. It's hard though, man. It's like it's... And it, I've read as well, it's like your ego trying to protect you. So like... When you get that uncomfortable feeling and it puts you off and you just don't do it because of that feeling, it's like your ego trying to protect you from all what you were saying before. The nasty comments, the da 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 the fact that people might like not might not like what you put out there or people just don't like you. So it's like, like Yeah. It's like this your ego just trying to protect you from that. Which I thought was crazy if you think about it. <laughs> it's one of those uh, like subconscious things inside yeah. you, isn't it? Self conscious uh self defence mechanism mechanisms. You're basically someone with just like so split internal sort of um how do you call it like it's not personalities because you don't even see it. But there's so much going on up there that you're not even aware of the mechanics that of your happens. own brain, yeah. the mechanics of everything that's happening internally that is subconscious that you're just not aware of. Mm. It's insane, man. It's like autopilot for most of it. Yeah. But that's where we're clever in a way. And I think we've always been because uh, we, the fact we've even said that, man, shows that we're knowledgeable in some sort of sense. Mm. To to the things going on, as it's people, a blessing fi- and a curse, though, it is a blessing and a curse. We spoke about this with we know a couple of people, man, who's we would say their IQ is not the best, but they're never fucking. They're just so happy, chill, yeah. so happy. Content. They ain't never worrying about stuff, and because they don't overthink. Yeah, like with, with what they have, and it can, probably dumbs down. Not not grateful, but content. Like without being consciously saying I'm grateful for this, it's just happy with what they have you know they're not thinking about yeah what they could have what their future's gonna be what their past <laughs> yeah was. that's why it's a blessing and a curse because yeah. the curse side of it is that you overanalyze everything you overthink mm. there's probably like a scientific sort of like word for that there you is, know yeah, different yeah. brain types and different um like that neurochemistry and the way the way you're wired i guess yeah. but it's uh yeah it is a blessing and a curse, man. How many times you just want to switch off? But then the blessing is like, if you if you think long long enough, you get somewhere, right? And would you rather just want to be able to switch? Like, nah, I wouldn't because you'd end up in positions. You're like, how the fuck did I get it? I wasn't thinking, and now I'm here. Yeah, damn. And like, mm. But it, it, it's 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 ambiguous, isn't it? Because there'll be things that just go over your head and you don't even notice. Yeah. Or something that might hurt us wouldn't even hurt another person. Yeah. They're, they're, they're so not with it, this liar. Didn't even know I'm in a bad position right now. Mm. It's, en- it's endless, man. Mm. It's a lot to think about. Yeah, it is. That's one thing I'm probably guilty of. Overthinking. <sighs> but then it's like... <laughs> Mate. It's like... <laughs> Is that also one though? It's like it's a blessing and a curse because 
I spend a lot of time thinking about things that some most people wouldn't give another, any more thought to. So, like, I think a lot about the type of person I am, the way I kind of conduct myself, the way I'm, like, moving through the world. Am I having positive impact? Not positive impact. Did I... And, like, because I'm constantly thinking about it and assessing it and saying, did it go well, did it not go well, could I have done better? I'm constantly, slowly, I think, making progress, albeit sometimes it's painful, Yeah. the overthinking part. I don't know what your experience is like. I hate, I, I, am, I do not like overthinking, man. If I could change one thing about myself, it'd be how much time I spend in my own head. Mm. yeah that is it man if I could change anything and you don't think you could turn it into a positive <sighs> so like if you really think about all the things that you're thinking about like, <laughs> think about things you know if there was like common themes and it kept coming up and then you thought about like what can I do about that why does it keep coming up can I do something to improve it I think about this all the time man I, ha- I get ruminating thoughts regularly sometimes about the exact same thing and i work myself to a conclusion i'm like all right that's it that's that's the answer boom man there we go again and i've and then i've real fairly meant really feel mental because i'll be talking to myself like you done this the other day mate and you you concluded you got somewhere and now you're running back round in circles chill out and i'll be like we're not doing this today I look, look in the mirror like, we're not doing this today, man. We just can't. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's like, we're doing this, mate. You don't, yeah. you don't have a choice. We're overthinking all day. Is it mostly negative? This, 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 and this. Yeah, it's, yeah a lot of, uh, quite often it is. Quite often it's about, about content. It's just like stuff I don't need to be worrying about. Stuff that's just like silly, that I'm blown out of proportion that's from a time that didn't even matter from even if it's just my current day like um but yeah and i'm just like bro i don't i just just chill out today and sometimes i'm like just don't be a fucking idiot just chill and then i'll just chill and i overthink and then i start to i overanalyze fuck man was it that late night was it did i just stay up late did i did i lie in bed too long this morning mm. did i eat something weird what's going on why why do i not have the control today that I had another day. I'm very aware and I'm like, just just, just, get, just do it. And it's just like, nah, brain saying. Do you think something like, for, I, so I was, I'm an overthinker as well, right? but I kind of like, for me, getting a job in finance was the best thing I did, right? And I'll tell you why, is because I channeled all that overthinking into my job. And it sounds weird and like, it's a bit of a stretch, but like, I would get, I would over, the smallest little detail at work. Yeah, I would sometimes spend in like, I would spend like a week thinking about how I could save a minute on like a certain task, and like, I would just like try and channel it into something that, not positive, but like something else other than think overthinking myself. If that makes sense, and, like all what? my own problems. So like, I don't know if like, like can is there nothing you can channel it into where it's like. I don't know, the music or your lyrics or like just all day thinking about lyrics. Or, do you know what I mean? Something to kind of flip it from a negative yeah. to a positive. Well, I get those days, man. And they're the good days. Do you know what I mean? Um, but are you saying like treat it as like a redirect it? Sort redirect of it. Like coming back to what we were saying before about never being satisfied, like accept who you are. It's probably unlikely that before you die, you're going to figure out how to not overthink. I think it's like, it's the same with me. Just the way you're wired, there's not much you can do about it. What you just said is a great, great point. And it came up the other day and I'm doing a mindfulness course. It's meant to help with the counselling course that I'm doing. So like the training to become a counsellor, obviously that's not on at the moment um, because it's ended. Uh, Anyway, doing this mindfulness course and she was saying... The, the negative thoughts and that are quite um, a big thing in mindfulness is to 
to not combat your thoughts or be like, fuck man, I'm overthinking. I don't want to be overthinking. Stop overthinking. Is to just be like, I'm overthinking. Mm. All right. I, it's almost like you've, not you, like people, well, I suppose you as well, put a negative connotation on it. Like, yeah. That's it. It's you put a yeah. negative for you, whereas maybe it, you fight it. You might have had an experience where it made it negative, but imagine you kind of had a positive experience where you overthought something and came up with the solution to a problem or thought about this new idea for this because you were thinking about it all day. So it's just like the, your experience of it made it a negative. Yeah. Yeah. Fighting like the negative thoughts gives it power, man. Yeah. And that's what stops you from moving on from it. Mm. You need to just be like uh, accepting of whatever it is you're yeah, thinking yeah. of. Obviously, it can be annoying though, and that's what gets the Not better easy, of you. Yeah. But there, there is days when I fully immerse myself into, you know, songwriting, mm. um, and it's good. I don't know what it is yet, and I'm, I don't know what it is that trips me up on the bad days. It's hard. I just don't get it. Mm. So, but like. But then again, is I think that's just me, man. I've been like that since a it kid. It's just you, like being like that since a kid, like. And I just I don't know. It's like again, you're spending time trying to figure out why it happened. It could be one of a thousand reasons. Some of you ate, you got fifteen minutes less sleep, or. Sometimes I think it's just a chemical imbalance as well. Yeah, could I do be, actually yeah. believe that sometimes your brain just ain't, ain't, what if, ain't up to working. And, like, so here's the question: producing you, what you need. What if you knew exactly what it was? How would that help you in any way? Well, like, so you what if it's it, something I could eliminate though? Something you could eliminate, but if it's happened, it's happened. Yeah. As in. As in, you wake up and you're in one of those moods. Yeah. All right. No matter what outcome. You ask yourself what caused it, no matter what uh, it was, it's happened, you can't change it. So like stressing about what made it happen, is that time well spent? No, it's not time well spent. I guess the only thing you could say is... If you cannot, if, it if, can it's, if it's it identified, yeah. it's preventative for yeah. future. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know. But the day is not spent. Why am I feeling like this? The day is spent in that rut of whatever your thoughts are, mm. you know? Whatever it is that's beating you up, whatever it is that's chewing, chewing you, that little, it's just a little monkey on your back, you know? But then that, that that's when I try and do the grateful thing. To go full circle, it's like, nah, man, shake it off. So what do you think it should be like? What? So, like, you talk about, like... How it is when you've got that monkey on your back in the day, yeah? We shouldn't be there, mate. <laughs> but what, what does that look like? Like, are you just not thinking? No, it's like thinking of things I shouldn't be thinking about while trying to just go about my day. So not really being present, you know, typing on a computer but hardly looking at the screen. Playing guitar but not really looking at the guitar. Just thinking of other things. I'm not taking anything in. I'm not doing anything. I'm, some, like I'm, being present. I'm somewhere else, mate. But I don't I'm having a different conversation yeah. with a different person, speaking inside my head to yeah, myself, yeah, yeah. beating myself up, talking shit. I'm, I'm not like a fucking depressed person. No, no, I'm no, not, no, no. like, in the slightest. I'm a happy-go-lucky, spring in my step type, type of dude, but I'm my own worst enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. But I don't think, like... I think a lot of people aren't present, like... You might have the more the negative like self talk and that, but like everything you just described there, typing an email but looking out the window and like playing guitar but just looking at the wall or whatever. Yes, yeah, that that is then wasted time because I wasn't actually there for present for what you were doing. I've been doing that a little bit more though, you know, like getting up earlier and I've got nothing else to do and I've got no work at the moment. My my morning workouts done, whatever. And just doing things slowly. Mm. I'll play the guitar really slowly, man. I'll learn something slowly. I'll read slowly. And it's given me like a little bit of a new lease of life. Mm. Walk around slowly. I've been walking places slower. That sounds weird to say that out loud. <laughs> actually sounds like no, no, a fucking it, yeah. freak. But instead of rushing. It, instead of rushing, it, it, it drops off and eliminates an element of anxiety you don't realise you carry with you mm. when you're just fucking like, bam. Yeah. Oh, no, no, i got to run to work, got to yeah, scoff yeah, my yeah. food like fucking for no reason, just got to rush my dinner like i got somewhere to mm. be even though I'm home for the night. 
I'm gonna, I do it when I'm like, I know I say guitar a lot, but when I'm like we're watching a YouTube video, I like watch the full 30 minutes, like I have to watch the full thing and like. On double speed, you just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through, Instead yeah. of like, I don't know what I've been doing now. I've been watching a minute, mate, and stopping mm-hmm. it. I watched the second minute another day. Obviously watching a minute, learning, yeah, yeah, like yeah. taking it away and, play, and playing or something. Um, with the books as well. I, I want to finish the Stephen King book so I can read the next Stephen <laughs> King book. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's how I like, was getting through some books at, at one time. You said you'd done it with self-help books. You know, like I had like eight self-help books instead, instead of, of one. Instead of one and sticking. Exactly. Yeah. And, that, and that's what I've been doing, you know. I've been reading slow. I'm like, fuck it, we're on this book, man. Enjoying this book. Mm. Yeah, but you want to read his whole bibliography. Yeah, and that's yeah. 70 books. So, if it takes you fucking 10 years, do it in 10 years. You're really going to you really yeah. enjoy it, but just because you can say I've done it in two years. Yeah. Stuff like that, man. Um, the mindfulness taught me that it's just appreciating the little things and it's changed my life a little bit in how much and it goes back to these ruminating thoughts even when it's not negative I realise you don't realise like you just said looking out the window how unpresent you are for fucking everything man. most of your day nearly and if everything. you're unpresent yeah, you're not experiencing why do you think you're... months just go by and yeah. it's suddenly fucking that's quite a scary June thing, teens. actually. And I think it's another Sam Harris moment. He's like, if you spend half of your day daydreaming, that's, he's like, that's like, what is it? It's like sleeping. Yeah, you're not it's there. Not, it's, it's like, like you're completely... Dark. It's like being dead or something. Uh, half an hour... <laughs> that's com- extreme. <laughs> that's a fucking well extreme, but it's like... <laughs> but like half an hour can pass, yeah, you don't know where the time went. You've been daydreaming, <laughs> not even like aware where you are. And like, Imagine living half of your, letting half of your life go by like It's that. fucking mad, man. But it's so and hard And that's what I'm trying to, to fight. It's so it's hard. So and I'll be coming back. But you start doing it in little things and then it gets so much easier. I want to been brushing my teeth, mate. I've been watching the toothbrush, like go on every tooth. Uh, the kettle, man. When I'm looking, I've been looking at my hands more than ever to watch my hands do the thing that I'm doing yeah, instead yeah. of being like this. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. I've mm-hmm. been watching my hand. I'm cooking the food. I'm putting the kettle on. I'm typing. It's not thinking about what you're doing. But I think as well, because it's funny because I do ponder on all this, like, okay, well, this is what I'm trying to do. And I kind of think that's what life was like as a child. You know, you mm-hmm. had that more sensibility and like innocence where you weren't thinking all the time of other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's why... You were like that back then, but now I think, you know, in the the work, the rat race, social media, everything, Mm. it's been fucking hectic for us growing up, as it has everyone else, right? We're all trying to learn and adjust Mm. to a brand new way of living. And I think somewhere along the lines of typing on, typing, 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 learning how to type really fast, doing stuff like that, you just got caught up, man. And now you've got to relearn everything, but you didn't realize it was happening at the time. I kind of have that um, opinion on it that, you know, we learned to like overthink, overanalyze not be present mm. from probably how the last like 10 to 15 years have been they've been good years don't get me wrong but yeah no no so have you heard that um i think his name is jonah hari he's taught he's got a book and it's basically an attempt he thinks that we have an attention crisis all the things you just said social media work screens laptops short form media tiktok YouTube shorts, yeah. Getting shorter and shorter. Shorter mate. and shorter. Like our attention spans are just, because we have instant access to whatever we want, we don't, our attention is like getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And like, it's getting worse. Like, it used to be YouTube, which was like 10, 15 minutes videos. Now it's like TikTok, which is like a, a max minute videos, I think. YouTube shorts is the same. It's a minute. And that's what people want. They want quick, short, just like a slot machine. <laughs> exactly. And we've let that overlap into our personal life. I want to eat my dinner in five minutes instead of taking 20 minutes to enjoy it while I've got some shit TV show in the background so I can focus on that instead of actually like being like, what is this meal? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, and that, I've done, you do that with loads of stuff, man. When's the last time you wanked for an hour instead of five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually enjoyed one. Got in, got in the bath and lit some candles, man. Bit of bubble bath. <laughs> yeah. You haven't done that in years, have you? Just like, oh, quick, quick Rush one. Rush it through, yeah. yeah. Mm. That was a joke. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, and it just, you do, it, you do it with a number of things, man. Yeah, it's quite, it's, uh, but it is tough again. It's like, but it's like, I think you said it before. It's like, you say like, 
about the guitar, like you do a thousand hours of practice so that that hour playing over a backing track is like effortless and like you're not thinking, you're just playing freely. You're yeah. just playing. So I think it's the same with like grateful, gratitude and also being present. It's like you do that thousand hours of deliberate practice and then all of a sudden it just becomes not effortless, but it, you know what I mean? It's more natural. It just becomes your way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, it's yeah. integrated into yeah, your, like, your core. Day, rather than like thing. you were saying before, you're thinking about what you're doing with your hands and that because you're trying to deliberately be aware of like yes. the present. Whereas at some point you should just You just be, want to be. Yeah. It, it's it's you don't want to be consciously attempting these things. Mm. You want that to pass over into part of your being. Yeah. yeah. It's tr- I'm trying to get that back so desperately, man. Because and it's fucking good, mate. Yeah. I had a I can't remember. It was either Saturday or Sunday. I just nailed it all day. It wasn't forced. It wasn't attempted. Mm. I was breathing. And I just started to like appreciate so much more little things. I think me and Mia, we went to the park just before work. I wanted to just sit in the sun for Mm. half an hour. Ended up taking like a flask of me. Coffee. <laughs> put a yo- uh, of green tea. Easy. I put like a yogurt in a lunchbox. <laughs> I mean, I just to go sit in like parade on a Sunday morning. Normally I would just be like, oh, let's just go over there, sit in the sun for 10 minutes yeah, and yeah, come yeah, back. Come just take your time. And I was just like walking everywhere slow. And, and it was good, mate. It was mm. such a good day. And I, I went around my nans and for the first time in like so many, in a long time, there's a few of us there at the same time. You know, Ethan was there. My mum was there. Mom's boyfriend and Mia and I was just taking a look around man, taking it all in. I was making people laugh. I was having fun. It was good. And normally when I'm at my nan's, I'm like, she's in, she ha- the con- oh, this is going off topic a bit, but she's like, she's quite, not moany, but she, um, she worries a lot. So she's going on about mm. stuff that's not too like nurses and, and all this and all that. And I won't get into it, but. And she wasn't, you know, she was just nice and calm. And man, I was just watching. And I think that's because of how, like, we were being around her. I wonder know? if that's because of how you were. It does. It resonates. Mm. So it was just good, man. It was a fucking great, great day. And I was just like, you ever have a day? And just, it's, it's a good day. And yeah, it's just a good day. Yeah, yeah. And you say, that's how it's meant to be. That's man. how it should be. But it's every now, it's very rare. At the moment, it is. And I, I, and I guess it's a privilege, but it shouldn't be once in a blue moon. Mm. Should it, man? Like, this was a nice day. But you don't know what makes it a good day. Well, man, you do. You, you have, have an it. indication, like you were saying, you took your time more. I took my time. Pre- I appreciate it. You know, I kept doing a lot of breathing. Because mm. they say they do a lot about breathing and mindfulness course. And I reckon we'll, we should read a book or two, man, and do a pod on breathing. And, yeah. re- and do our research on it first. Mm-hmm. It's so important. And I do it when I'm st- when my heart rate and stress starts to like um, mm. rise at work. I'm not like this sounds fucking hippie, like you know, breathe in and out, man. You'll be fine. It's not that. It's just little simple, simple like it's something you should do, and you don't realize you don't do it. You know what I mean, obviously you're breathing, but I'm saying be conscious. Just do a little five. Don't sit there like a fucking weirdo breathing in and out for like everyone to see you. Like, oh, that kid's what the fuck's he doing? He's just. Mm snorting over there or yeah, something yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean just be like yeah no it's true man, it's like, i haven't took a deep breath in ages right like, a lot just of us are shallow breathing like if you would only whereas if you breathe in deep through out your chest into your stomach proper deep breaths uh, it's, it's normal not, not normal like to be sat at your desk breathing but like that wim hof guy he's massive now like everyone's much more aware of breathing breath work Breath, breath work, work yeah. everything drops, man. I can, I feel it internally. Mm. Yeah, I'm not saying I become fucking enlightened in two minutes from breathing, but everything just it gets it you. gets it's it centers like, you, it grounds you, it gets grounds everything you. a bit quieter before the fucking manicness. Oh, everything's about to get loud here. I'm stressed. You can it reels it back in. Mm. You 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 save yourself by reeling it back in ever so slightly, but you don't understand. You don't realize how much it helps in the grand scheme of fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. losing control of your day. And again, that's a simple one available to you. That's why it's such a good one because it's like you have to breathe. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to breathe anyway, so why not make sure that at least two, three times a day you try and 
try one of those breathing exercises. Have you tried the Wim Hof one? Uh, I've read half of his book. Um, Have you done the... He's got a guided YouTube video. It's crazy. Is that the one where... Yeah, I have actually. Is that one where you breathe in and out loads and you breathe out the last time you breathe out, hold you can your hold your breath for fucking you forever. Yeah, yeah. Up to like two minutes. It's, a, it's a crazy amount, right? Crazy. You go a little bit dizzy. Do that two, three times in a row. After it, you're like... I got dizzy, visual, I got visual, not visuals, like just colours, purple and white mostly. And this just crazy sense of like peacefulness after I've done it. So I've done it in bed and I've also done it in a 10 minute cold shower a few times. Cold shower. <laughs> he tells you don't do that. <laughs> That's yeah. one of his like don'ts, but. The craziest one was the cold shower. I bet. That's too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And like, hang on to the shower. <laughs> yeah. Um, he he's sick, man. Yeah, I love him, man. He and, uh, had like because he lost his wife to suicide. Yeah, that's he why he started yeah. it because she, from like um she was depressed. She was depressed, but from I think you're saying like a perspective where it's like why mm. why you know. Why was she, why did she feel that way with the life that we had together? Yeah. So I get that's where his brain started going. I'm going to go on a little journey here and work it work out. And then he's obviously became the Iceman and helped millions of people worldwide. Mm. And and he's one of those humans, right? That you look at and you're like that. That's a happy guy. Happy Looks guy. after himself. He just oozes charismatic, charismatic, like, funny, humorous. Um, yeah, he does. Doesn't he's he? got that aura where it's like. I just know you eat well. You do yeah, loads yeah, of shit yeah, yeah. that looks after yourself. Nice to drink though. And I've watched a couple of the Vice documentaries and I mean like share a bottle of wine. He gets a bit pissed. Does it? That. But yeah. Well, maybe he's that's a, not a bad thing. Nah, he's a, he's a, I think everyone that meets him as well seems to say the same thing. He's just got this like, uh, what's the word? Like aura. Yeah. Or like person. And he's got, um, it's obviously, English is obviously his second <laughs> yeah, language. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite funny when he's like, oh, no, no, no. In the most nicest his, way. His it's Dutch. A, it, yeah, his <laughs> Dutch at- attempt at English is. Yeah. For an English person, it sounds funny. Mm. So that's that's good. We've done sense of accomplishment and gratitude. Yeah. We had a good conversation there about them both. Mm. What's the takeaways from it? I think gratitude is something you have to practice. Yeah, and I I'd agree there. You have, to, I have to remember that because it's, it's not something that just comes naturally to me. So it's like I've tried it for short periods, but I've never really had a consistent, let's say, gratitude practice where I'm, I've done it for maybe a week or two and then given up. So I think takeaway for me would be maybe try and add that back into my life. Good man, good. Good. And sense of accomplishment. I'm still not sold. I think coming back to it, it's like I've accepted who I am and the fact that I'm never satisfied is part of the reason. I'm, it's my biggest motivator for me to push on and do more things. So, Would you do this as a challenge from me? As so, a challenge. And it's nothing big. The next time you achieve something great, what? And I... What I mean by that is one of your running things. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Is that night just sitting in it? T- come home. I want you to close your eyes. Mm. I want you to just talk to yourself about, well done, mate. Yeah. Just do it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Yeah, yeah. The outcome of it might be like, uh, still nothing. I don't even, I, 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 I don't, I don't know what that's going to do. <laughs> I don't know why I told you to do that. No, I but think. But it could be a nice, Definitely just to see how it makes you like feel. 10 minutes, like I've had that. Like, don't get me wrong. When I've done the big races or if I've done hit big milestones in my life, I've had like, it's not that I've not thought well done. Yeah. I've thought like well done. Yeah. But I've not sat and reveled in it for like I a want week you to do or that. two. <laughs> nah, no, we could do this. You know what I mean? I want you to just sit with it for a night. Keep reminding yourself. Keep talking to yourself. Give yourself a few well dones before... You allow your brain to say what's next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have a night. I know that's a lot. <laughs> the next morning you wake up, you forget all about Sign it. Sign up you for the next one, yeah. yeah. But no, yeah, deal. Deal, deal so. Yeah. So same with me for gratitude is that I need to learn to implement it a bit more frequently than what I do 
if I forget to, do not beat myself up, man. Mm. It is what it is. To know that it's not always going to work. Um, but yeah, and I think maybe attempt a new approach as opposed to just a mental approach where I'm like, oh, I'm just talking to myself. Mm. Or I'm reminding myself internally. Because if we're having one of those days where I'm not on my own team, it's not going to work. Yeah, That's why, you know, maybe get a book, a journal channel again. It into something. Channel it into like physical words that I'm going to view every day and give it a go. I, I, sometimes I don't like, I find it tedious is the word, you know, you're writing in a book. Like, these are yeah, what I'm yeah. grateful for. There's something, even though it's just you, it's just something embarrassing and nerve wracking about. This is what I'm grateful for. I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down. Mate. I'm writing That's it down. Art. I don't know if you get the same, but when I was journaling, like put like that type of journaling, I couldn't get past the thought that someone might read it one day. <laughs> and I was just, I couldn't be honest. And I couldn't put, I couldn't write what I wanted to write because I couldn't get past it. Yeah. It's it, a shame. It's brutal honesty is, it's difficult. Because, mm. you know, you talk about other people and you talk about this and that. Mm. You don't want to hurt other people. It is... So yeah, that's it. And the self accomplishment thing as well. It's it's it will always be ambiguous to mm. me. Cuz I've I've never f- I've accomplished a lot in terms of uh, growing up, maturing, changing bad habits, becoming a better person, becoming a better person, reflecting, attempting this, attempting that, or attempting this and that all in a direction to to grow. Um, I don't know if they're accomplishments other people would perceive them as such but for me man it's just like we're just learning so yeah I'm I'm a very it is what it is no I get it it's like it's, everything just it is yeah, what it is it's do you I think it there is something to taking stock of what you've done and I think we could probably be better at it mm. but I also see how much it's motivated me to keep pushing myself. So I'm in the middle, I guess. Angles, man. Yeah, angles. (laughs) Just perception. (laughs) Sound. Should we wrap wrap it up? up. Yeah. Nice one, brother. Episode three. Boom.